Yo, what's happening guys? Coming at you from downforsellingshop.com with another frequently asked question. And it's asked in a few different ways, so I'm gonna try to cover it. One of the ways that people ask it is, why is my subwoofer not pushing as much power as I think it should be? But I believe they're asking or saying it's not moving as much as they think it should be or my system isn't as loud as I think it should be. But first, my name is Jonathan Price, owner and operator of downforsoundshop.com and this YouTube channel, which is two of the fastest growing things in car audio. If you will, hit that subscribe button and enable notifications so you know every time we drop a video and you'll get it sent to your inbox and you'll be able to check it out first. All right, let's get into this video. So people ask this question kind of in a weird way, a few different ways, but we're gonna try to make sense of it. If your subwoofer isn't moving as much as you think it should be, or if it's not as loud as you think it should be, it could be a few different things. So we're just gonna to touch on some of those topics. Say if you have a 5,000 watt amp and you're trying to power a 3,000 watt sub and you think it should be way louder than it is. One thing it could be is you don't have adequate enough electrical. Uh, you don't have a high output alternator, you don't have enough batteries, you don't have enough juice to be running that amplifier so your voltage is probably falling way down and that's going to make an amplifier that maybe can produce 5000 watts is now producing like 1500 watts uh, or somewhere around there, you never know. Um, the next thing that it could be, it could be impedance rise so or you're wired at the wrong impedance. So say you have a single sub set up in a 5,000 watt amp, or we can use this amplifier for an example. So this is our JP95 amplifier, one of the best five channels on the market. For, other, for under 400 bucks, you really cannot beat this amplifier. It's beautiful and it's a powerhouse. So it has zero gauge inputs. And on the sub side, on the dyno, it does around 1200 watts. So uh, it's pretty good power for a five channel amplifier, especially on the sub side. So if you say you have this uh, single subwoofer that you're gonna be powering with this, if you have a dual two ohm subwoofer, you could wire that to a one ohm load. This amplifier is gonna put out 1200 watts at one ohm. But if you have say a dual four, the lowest you could wire that subwoofer to is two ohm. And at two ohm, this amplifier is gonna put out usually half, and not just this amplifier, but most of any amplifier is gonna put out half the amount of power at two ohm than it does one ohm. So instead of getting 1200 watts, you're gonna be getting 600 watts. So obviously 600 watts is not gonna be as loud as 1200 watts. And you're gonna be wondering, why is my subwoofer not moving? Like, why is it not as loud as I think it is? That's probably why. But say you do have a dual two ohm sub and you have it wired to one ohm, you also have something that's called impedance rise. Impedance rise is when you start playing your system you have an impedance rise. So say you're wired at one ohm, but as soon as you start playing it, your ohm, you're gonna have a rise in your impedance. So you you can go, I've seen people go up to like eight or nine ohm when they start playing their system. So obviously an amplifier is gonna be putting out way less power at eight ohm than it is, or even two ohm than it is at one ohm. So if you have a lot of impedance rise, that could be another reason for it. Or you could have the incorrect enclosure for your subwoofer setup. So um, if, if you have the, the subwoofer in an in, incorrect enclosure, say you uh, have the cubic foot wrong, this particular subwoofer, the Sunnell SA Classic right here, it works optimally in about 1.9 cubes and tuned to 32 to 35 hertz somewhere in there. So if you have it in, a, say, a huge subwoofer box that is, say, twice as big, you have it in four cubic feet, and the, you're like, man, this thing sounds like crap. It's, it's not playing, it doesn't even sound like it's playing any bass. It's just, it's moving, but I can't really even hear any bass coming from it. That's why the subwoofer um, enclosure is way too big, or if it's way too small, it would just, say, be loud in a very uh, short bandwidth. So it, it would cause issues as well. So the box could be wrong. You could have impedance rise. You could have it wired at the wrong impedance. You could have insufficient electrical. Those are four things that could be causing you to think your system isn't as loud as you think it should be. And sometimes it's just people have their expectations of what they bought is way more than what it can do. Say somebody will buy like a single eight and they're like, I thought it would be way louder than this. 
I'm like, what? I mean, what do you expect, bro? I'm like, it's, it's a single eight inch sub or it's a single sub. How, how much are you expecting to get out of this? It can only do so much. So sometimes people's expectations are just way through the roof. So I hope this information has found you well. That's gonna be five reasons why your system might not be as loud as you think it should be or your subwoofer's not moving the way it should be. But don't forget about the down for sound difference. Guaranteed lowest prices, fastest shipping, best customer service. We have four different types of Sam's Cash financing on the website under the financing tab. So be sure to check that out. And we will see you in the next one. Later. Yo, what's up guys? If you want to see more of the hot content that you just saw in that video, be sure to follow me on all my social media channels from YouTube, Facebook, Instagram, uh, TikTok, The Life of Price is my handle on there. Also have Down for Sound Shop on Facebook and Instagram and don't forget Snapchat, that's JPD4S. Check out all the hot content on there as well.